Welcome to our program. And in addition to our painting lessons, we're also going to start interviewing some local artists in the, our area to see how they come up with their creativity and how they paint. And so we're going to have them on art and imagination. Anything that you can imagine, you can draw. Let's go to the studio. Hi, welcome to the Art and Imagination program with Jenna. I happen to be Jenna and I am the painter, trying to teach you how to paint too. And you can, for sure. So let's, let's we've already started this still life uh, as far as, as as it goes, and they'll be putting that on the, uh, the camera here pretty quick. But I wanted to show you how I begin my painting session to, with watercolor. I usually have a bottle of water, and this happens to be a little Sutter Home white Zinfandel bottle that I've, I'm going to reuse again. Uh, somebody drank the wine out of it. And I also have a spray bottle that I have here, and that is a necessity in watercolor. So I'm going to spray all my paints to get them softened up so that I can use them. And I, I soften up all because I don't know exactly, as, as I'm painting along here, I don't know exactly what I'm going to use. But if we can uh, show the... Uh, the painting that I have here on the camera above me, then I'm going to explain something to you. This is all, we've already started this, and this is all negative area out here. And I'm not going to worry about that today. We're going to we're going to concentrate on the, the center of this with the uh, uh, the onions and the, the squash and the uh, eggplant. So I'm going to be working in this area. And the reason that I put the table in there is when you're, when you're doing your composition, you want to keep it, keep your composition in a triangle. And that's with anything that you do, whether it's a portrait or whether it's a watercolor or whatever, acrylic, whatever you, you're thinking about doing. But uh, this is one that we set up here in the studio, and I was looking down at it. So therefore, that's why we have the table. But we, we will get to that part in the negative area after we kind of finish in this, this little square tabletop. So we're going to work on that today. And uh, let's hope we get a lot accomplished today. And I hope that you're uh, enjoying what I do because I absolutely love what I do. I've been doing it for over 50 years. So I brought along a picture of an elephant that I did. He's a big guy. And uh, so I have him in the studio. And there's always an elephant in the room, always, as you well know. And uh, I enjoy painting pretty big. It's much easier than painting small. These small paintings are really kind of difficult for me at times, but I get through them. So I've got a, a brush here. It's a, a, it's a uh, flat wash brush, and I've got purple on there, and I'm going to, well, it's kind of purple and blue, but I'm going to kind of bring this in and getting much darker as we go along. I didn't wet my canvas, and by the way, I'm painting on a watercolor canvas instead of paper. It was easier to carry to the studio, that's for sure. And I'm going around and I'm putting my a second wash on top of this uh, eggplant. So we're gonna make him shiny and pretty eventually. But watercolor takes uh, layer and layers and layers. It takes longer to do a watercolor than, say, an acrylic, because an acrylic, uh, it, it dries pretty fast. And we're going to be doing acrylic in, sometime in the program. So if your preference, you can contact me here at uh, Bella Vista Community TV. And uh, we're, our programs also go to YouTube. So 
you can always look us up on YouTube too uh, through the Bella Vista Community TV programming. So if you want to contact me, that's a good way to, if you have any questions. And uh, I, I'm going to enjoy reading your letters or what, what would you like to learn to paint? And that will help me also to, to, uh, to uh, get, think about what kind of programming you would like. And we're here to satisfy you. We, we want you to be happy with the program. And I'm hoping that you're going to learn a lot from me. So therefore, that looks pretty good on the camera that I see. So that, that helps a lot. So that's the beginning of our, our eggplant. This is the white pieces in here is the highlights that I've left a little white because watercolor is really when you're in contest how much paper you get to leave and make the whites rather than paint them in. So I'm going to clean this brush and I'm going to get over here to this elef uh, elephant. I got an elephant on my mind now. This onion. <laughs> See, artists even make mistakes. <coughs> you know, I get ahead of myself sometimes. So I'm going to get a little bit of an orange color going here and a little bit of yellow in there to yellow it up. Because it's going to be a yellow onion, and that makes sense to put yellow in, in the gold color. And I'm using a kind of a, co a orangey color in yellow and making that orange or that yellow stand out on that onion. I'm having a hard time uh, talking and painting today. I usually don't have that problem. That, that I'm going to start at the back elf, <laughs> the back onion. Back side. I, like I said, I got elephant on my mind. I borrowed him from the the place where uh, I had him hanging or st stowed away in an office in uh, one of the uh, vendors here. So I went up and borrowed him. So I'm going to put that wash, that orangey wash and yellow on that onion and I'm going to do the same and I've got it marked here you, you 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 if you saw the last program you could see what what I left and I left left that some of it really really light and I want to keep it that way so I'm just dabbing this is part of being a watercolorist you just dabble a lot and there's, you can never make a mistake. I don't care. There, we don't make mistakes here. We make, as Bob Ross says, happy accidents. And that's true with any drawing or painting that you might want to do. Don't feel that. In fact, I was joking with one of our tech, technical fellows here, and he said he could only draw stick people. I says, well, I love that because I draw stick people too. And if I'm drawing people, that's how I start. And it's, people just don't even think that they can uh, draw people, the whole body. Well, you can because if, if it's a stick person, then you can build around it. It's just putting more, more uh, meat on the bones, I'll call it. And the bones would be the stick person. Okay, now I got those two onions going. So I have an orange squash up here. And the opposite of purple on a color wheel is orange. So that's why this is going to be a warm looking uh, a picture that we're painting here. And I like warm pictures. They make you feel good. Okay, that squash was pretty, pretty orangey. I think it was probably a summer squash. So I'm going on the edge of it that's laying here next to the onion. And I want that to, to divide between the two, the onion and the squash. And I'm not going to put any more color in my brush. I don't need to. I'm going to pull it out. And I'm, the bottom of the squash here is rounded. So I'm going to pull everything to the center 
of this core down here on the bottom. And this is rounded up here, so I want to try I want to go the way I want to pull my brush and my paint the way that the squash is 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 made. And the way God made him, he made him a big round bottom. <laughs> I think I'm in that group too. So I'm going to pull that paint over and then I'm going to come up to the bottom. And that'll be kind of flat because he's laying on his side. But then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to, since this, this is the light side, or actually the light is up above us, I'm going to take and just pull that across and then these two shall meet. This side and this side. I have so much fun doing this. It is so relaxing, I don't care if you're, you're just playing around with watercolor. And the little watercolor things that the kids get in school, boy, those are just really handy. And I use them just to, to practice at home because the more you practice, the better you get, always. It's just like Mom told you, if you want to do something, like even in sports, you got to practice and practice. And if you pay, play an instrument, it's practice, 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 or sing. Okay, we've got him, him laid out there pretty good. Now I have a lemon over here with the yellow, really yellow. And that also is a complementary color to the purple. But the main guy is this beautiful eggplant. And uh, we want to make him be the star. Okay, I got my lemon. I'm going to make him a little bit bigger if I can. Because I've got a lot of shadow color under him. So, And the reason I did this, this color the way that I did is it, it makes shadow colors. And you can see I want the shadow of the, the squash here. And then there's an, in through here there's a lot of shadow and through here. So that'll be a lot darker with a darker purple and blue mixed together. And I've got pencil lines here, which is fine. Some watercolor people, when they're, they're collectors, they want to see the artist pencil lines. 30. It's okay if you have pencil lines. Now I'm going to change brushes here because this is a this is a wash brush and I've got some intricate little green tops here that I want to, to paint and get busy with. So I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab this brush. It is a round and it's a number 10 round and I've never used it before so it's pretty stiff so I have to put it in the water and boy does it come out wonderful to paint with. It's not a new brush, I've had it forever. So I'm going to use kind of a dark, uh, oh, grassy green for the bottom wash on this. And it's lighter than another green that I'm going to use. So with watercolor, you do the light colors first and then you do the uh, dark colors on top. So as you can see, I've got this all, all really nice purpley and now I'm going to go in and put the greens in of the top of that particular eggplant that we had that day. And I got a lot of water in my brush and I'm just going to wash it around, pull that, pull that green around because I want it to be the light color, not the dark color. So I'm using that green to hold on down in this point on the point and I can add more points to it going down through there. Because this is just another wash and it's dabbling again, you know, it's you don't have to be precise. But I hope you're enjoying what you're doing and I hope you enjoy the program. Okay, that's about all the green that we're going to have in here. 
is the top of that eggplant. Okay, it's time to wash the brush again. And I'm going to go into some, uh, oh, some uh, golden colors here for the ends of these, for the ends of the squash. And I'm going to leave the center there because I'm following the lines that I have on this drawing. So I'm going to leave that center there so I can really put some dark color in there. And then I'll move some of the dark color out on this gold color that we have here. And the onion, I'm going to do the same thing because he's got kind of a brown top too. So let's put a little hat on him too and leave the center. So I'm just going around and placing some uh, golden colors on there because this onion is golden. And also the... Uh, Put a little gold there at the end of that uh, lemon. Now this one over here is a little bit different. It's got it's way up here, and I need a little more paint with that. So I'm going to use some straight paint because I have enough water in my brush for sure. And I'm going to put that little round top cap on him too. And like I said, paintings always look kind of awful while you're working on them. But it's okay. It's, that's what it's supposed to be. You always kind of look at it and say, oh dear, what have I done? But I'm going to make it a little bit different instead of round like this other one. And I'm going to bring that little onion part down into the gold colors. Because this is the skin of the onion and I'm going to paint it the way that it's sitting. So I got to paint it going that way on this side and that way. Same thing with the squash because all of these these pieces are round. So you got to make them look round or that you don't want them to look flat. So you got to to wash them down the way that they grow. And we're going to get to that eggplant doing the same thing here in a minute. I was just letting it dry because we want it much darker. So I need a little more gold, a little more water to go into this other onion over here. And I like the golden colors. It just is so pretty. And when you wash it like this, it just... It's so much fun to move that paint around the way you want it. And it goes pretty easy. And anybody that says you can't uh, fix a mistake in watercolor, they are definitely wrong because I've fixed many of my mistakes in watercolor and had no problem. So we'll go around here at this skin on this onion also. And I don't have it too smooth. The canvas is harder to work on than paper because it, it, it uh, grabs the netting underneath or the webbing, whatever you want to call it. So it takes a little bit longer to do on canvas than it does on paper. But this canvas is a lot more uh, forgiving than a paper is, that's for sure. But I'll have to go back, if I, because if I had too much water in there, see, I can take it off. I mean, it's easy to fix, just like that. So you always have your, your uh, paper towel with you. And you can go back in there and pull some of that paint out, however much you want, and smooth it out. Just like that. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I love doing this. I hope you do too. It's just so much fun. Now I'm going to leave this part here because that is the onion in there. So that'll be a different color. So we're going to have the highlights and then this, this particular onion sticking out. Now this will be a lot whiter. And we can paint that because uh, 
actually watercolor white doesn't really work well. So I use acrylic for most of my whites that I want to be kind of bright and everything. Because watercolors, just the watercolor white just is not strong enough. And when you put water with it, then it's even even lighter and you can't get get the colors that you want. At least I don't think so. So the edges of this is going to be a little bit darker. And I'm going to pull these up. Then I'm going to dry my brush because I got so much water in there. I'm going to use a dry brush and just kind of tap on it where I want to pick up some of that paint. Still pulling it in the direction that the onion is, is made, the way that it comes. And I'm going to put a little bit darker rim around this, this end too because the light is coming from the top and as it goes around it'll get darker. So pull that in there. Keep pulling it up. I hope you can see. I hope my hand's not in the way of what I'm doing. Okay, need a little more paint. My paint's wet because as you remember I sprayed it as we started and it'll stay wet for quite some time. So I can go back in there and get this darker around this rim. Still pulling up to the way that the onion grows. And we all know that if you've worked with onions, you know that you get this film, this golden film. If, if you pull it off, it doesn't get off your fingers too easy. So you just kind of work with it to the way that you want it. I need to smooth this other part over here on this when it's wet enough. So I just put more water in my brush, clean water, and kind of smooth that out because I didn't like the looks of it or the dabbles as I dabbled along. So I want to kind of fix that. You can fix it by putting water on your brush, just plain water and going down. So now we've got a good start on our, our still life. And the next time we meet, we're, we're going to be going in with the shadows and everything like that. So that'll be good. But right now it looks pretty good. A good start for what we got. So work a little more on the lights, pulling that some of that out and pulling it towards the way that the squash. So we want to make him round. Like I said, there's no mistakes in watercolor or any painting because you can fix it. And you can create some beautiful things Next time on the show, I will be wearing a shirt that I've made. I've painted a horse in a shirt, and it's very pretty, and it's got a lot of layers in it. So next time, I'll probably wear that and show you that you can uh, also paint your clothes. <laughs> I have paint, fun painting other people's clothes, but more fun painting my own. But uh, we're getting going to wind down now and get this program out to the to uh, the, f the film so you can watch. So we're just happy that you're here with us and painting with us. And just remember, if you go on YouTube, you can type in Art and Imagination with Jana, and you'll go to BC BVTV and uh, .com, and not .com, just go to BVTV and uh, look, at, look at the programming that we have listed on there. And you can see Art and Imagination, and you'll see this program. So we're happy that you're here with us, and have a wonderful day, and God bless. See you later. Happy painting.
Remember, anything that you can imagine, you can draw. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.